Okay. So when I when I first uh, read this paper, it was kind of a re oh uh, oh hey oh hello hello okay. So um, yeah, it's a little bit high. Okay. Well, in 2000, well TDD and then uh, these two guys in the meantime published Quick Check, which is a paper that was titled A Lightweight Tool for Random Testing of Castle Programs. When I first uh, read this, uh, for me it was kind of a revelation. <laughs> it was like a, what the... Yeah, it was really amazing to read that. Uh, and, and these guys uh, observed that 50% of the software was about testing. So imagine we spend half of our time creating tests or maintaining tests instead of creating new code. That, of course, takes a huge cost because uh, most of the time it's done manually. So their goal was to reduce that way of manually do, doing tests by automating testing. So important ideas that I have already written here is that it's important to check properties, not just to test code. Um, by properties, I mean the important thing, the important thing that you have to test. Don't create values, generate them. Life is too short, guys. <laughs> we need to come up with something that do the work for us. Feedback, because when something goes wrong, I would like to know as much information as I could. And of course, if I have to refute a test just to reproduce a bug, I need information to refute that test. Okay, as I told you, well, uh, some alternatives in the, in the JVM, of course, you can go to the, uh, to the hardcore. Frege is a Haskell implementation with a quick check implementation. Quick check in Java, there is a library. I have used it. It's very nice uh, for generating, uh, for generating uh, values. JGenit quick check. And Java Slang. I really encourage you to take a look to Java Slang. It's an amazing project, not only for the test model, but for all of them. So take a look at it. So then why is this talk about Spock? Well, to answer that, let me uh, talk a little bit about Spock. Well, I have already told you that it's a testing and a specification framework for Java and Groovy. That means that you can uh, code your applications in Java or Groovy and do the testing with Groovy. It's based on JUnit, so whenever or wherever you uh, are using JUnit, you can use Spock, which also means that it's a, an ID-friendly uh, framework. But the most important thing for me is that it has a highly expressive specification language, which will enable you to several things that I will explain in a moment. For example, it will help you to define properties. So it will help you to define the important things that you are going to test. It also will keep separated data from the properties. And this is very important because when you are reading your test, I, you don't want to get things mixed up. Um, it also has a, a template system, which will help you to give more feedback when something goes wrong. So, as I wrote there, uh, I will be reviewing these four topics during the talk. First of all, properties. In theory, a property is as simple as something that specifies what you expect of your program. So, if I expect my program to behave somehow, and I can express that, that is a property, that is the important thing, the thing I have to test. Uh, but in, practic in a practical way, well, you can think of uh, a property as a function. Um, well, we are um, taking this approach every day. A function that holds for a set of values is in the program you want to test. That looks like more or less like a, a, a test, right? So it's a function that it's fed by values and inside is testing your program. That's why it's called executable specifications because it's like a function that you execute and inside you are testing your real code. Okay, um, I will be using a dummy example. I call it dummy example because it's really dumb. Uh, it's the sum function which is really simple but it helps you to I forgot to start recording the session, but it doesn't matter. 
Okay, because the, the sum function is very easy to start explaining things. So, here we have a possible implementation of a sum of integers. It doesn't matter the implementation. But the thing is that because it's a sum, we know that it should have some properties. So because it's the sum uh, function, we may all know that it has like the commutative, the distributed, and so on and so forth. So let's pick one of them. Let's pick the commutative property for the, a sum that says that when two numbers are added, the sum is the same regardless of the order, the order of the addends. Okay, that is uh, really theoretical, but it, it explains very well what the, a sum should be doing. How do we translate this to Spock? Well, I can just write down what I have just said. That is really nice because if somebody else has to implement the test, he knows what to do. Um, um, but it's not implemented yet. I, I only wanted to show you the, the, uh, the structure. So basically we have a specification which has uh, tests inside which are called features. And the features uh, has like the name and then, well, the implementation of the test. So again, we have a specification, and a specification has features, and I will be using features to check properties. Okay? How I implement this? Well, I still, um, I still keep the uh, description, and in a very mathematical way, I can be expressing the property. So it doesn't matter if I'm adding up x and y, or y and x, the property must hold. Okay, here, this is one of the features of uh, Spock. We are using what is called a data table. Okay, it helps me to feed data to the variables inside, the data variables inside. So for prototyping a, a property is very nice. You can start saying, well, the first time I check in, I'm checking the property, I'm using one for X and one for Y and so on. So it's very nice. I can use a feature per property, and the property is nicely defined by the Spock DSL. But, what if properties must hold together? Well, uh, because of the life cycle of, of a feature, you can be, um, you can be, yeah. Sometimes you may want it to check if a set of properties hold together. So, for a sum function, I want to, uh, I want to check if all the properties, commutative, distributed, and so on, hold together, not separated. So, uh, whereas in quick check, you will be using the conjoint function, uh, because the conjoint function, you, give, uh, you uh, pass to this uh, function all the properties that you want to uh, be holding together. Uh, here in Spock, we can do kind of this. So, the, this life cycle expects that all of them hold together, if some of them in each iteration here fails, then all the properties all together uh, don't hold. Okay? There is another data table here because... Uh, okay, so data tables make it easier to see what values I'm passing, but some numbers could be still missing, and, and they are, because, uh, I mean, I was cheating, but here there's only one row, so I'm not testing anything, really. But again, some numbers could be still missing, and I can be st still adding an infinite n n uh, numbers to that test, especially if I'm doing it uh, manually. So it would be nice to have those numbers generated for me. So it's clear that I need something. I need generators. So what I like from a generator? Well, first of all, I would like a generator to generate a lot of random values for me. I put random values in, into quotes because at some point I will put in some constraints or some restriction to what a random value is. Uh, I don't want a generator to give me infinite number of values. That would mean that my test will never end. Okay. And uh, I also want to be capable or introduce extreme cases. What is an extreme case? If we will be using like a Haskell, uh, there will be um, little chance to introduce a null, for example. But because we are, because we are in Java, in the Java world, 
we may be uh, testing a, let's say we are testing a function that receives an integer, uh, um, the integer uh, object, not the, the, um, not the primitive. So I would like to see what happens if, if, uh, if I introduce a null. So I can be saying to the generator, OK, generate, generate for me a random number of integer values. But please, still once, use an L value to see what happened. That would be kind of a strange case. So let's see what Spock has out of the box for uh, generating data. Well, it has data types, which is, the, I would say, the most power, powerful feature for generating data. Um, but before uh, saying or defining what a data pipe is, I need to define two other concepts. Data provider, which is very simple, something that generates values, and data variables, which is a variable inside the test that receives a new variable, normally from a data provider, for each iteration. Each iteration is every time we are checking a property. So, data pipes. Well, a data pipe is just something that connects a data variable to the data provider. So we have a data provider generating data and assigns the new value to the data variable. It's indicated by the left seat operator. And just to bear in mind, any object that Groovy knows how to iterate over is uh, suitable to be um, data provided. So imagine iterables, iterators, which means collections and things like that, could be used as uh, data providers. Let's see an example. Uh, here we have just get rid of a lot of noise with, mm, that we get from data tables. And here I'm just uh, giving 100, uh, 100 numbers for X and 100 numbers for Y with a data provider. Remember, uh, something that is kind of iterable with the left sheet and the data variable. So here we are checking this property 100 times with different values for x and y. Another way of uh, using uh, data pipes is that you can feed a data variable and maybe another data variable could be getting its value depending on the data variable fed by um, data provider. And of course, you can always create an invariant. You can go as complex as you want here is an example for creating a list, three elements. So we have a, a range, and by using this function, I'm just creating this list of triple. Okay. So what are the pros of using data pipes? Well, they come out of the, out of the box, which is nice. You don't have to uh, you don't have to import any other library. It's really flexible. You, you have seen how far you can go with that. And of course, you, can cre you could create uh, dependent variables, as we have just seen. But you can create basic generators. And I tell you something. If you create more complex generators, um, I'm sure you are calling too much. Okay? Uh, because the last example about the triple, uh, I would say it's kind of uh, too much. And yeah, you have to bear in mind the most important thing that a developer is, is lazy, okay? So that's why I introduced Spock Genesis, okay? Spock Genesis is a library that brings data generators. So you don't have to create your own with the data pipes, but you can use it just calling a static method. That is the GitHub repository. If you want to use it, uh, you only have to um, add the Gradle dependency and then use this import. Most of the functionality that uh, you can get from uh, Spoke Genesis, you can get it from this class. And most of them are static methods. We, we are going to see some examples. First of all, for basic types. For example, integers. How to generate integers. So in this example, I'm just creating a, a test that validates that uh, the test is going to pass. Uh, I'm making sure that this will fail, this validation will fail. So I'm generating, um, sorry, just to be precise, I'm testing that every number that I'm passing is not positive, okay? 
So here I'm generating integers from minus 100 to zero. Uh, and I would like to, whoa. Okay. Okay. Somebody? Well, uh, I will continue anyway. Uh, the thing is, that if you re if you remind if you remember the the example, that is not the same like saying we are going to be producing sequentially numbers from minus hundred to zero. This is going to take random numbers from a minus hundred to zero. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. That example w was going to take a hundred random numbers from that generator. So what guarantee that they are not repeated? Or? That they do not be repeated? Uh, no, no, it, it, I, I don't think so. I, I, I haven't seen the implementation, but I don't think so because it just uh, uses a random, uh, it picks randomly numbers. So it would be really, really easy just to get a uh, uh, number as well. I don't know if you can just uh, introduce a seed just to say in base of this seed don't repeat those numbers. So, But it's, uh, it's unlikely but it could happen. So another method for integers this one it just uh, gets random numbers any random number from the minimum possible integer number to the maximum uh, this is the one we have just seen, and then this one, well, um, and then another one that it uses uh, groovy ranges, just a syntactic sugar for saying this is the minimum boundary, and that is the maximum boundary. Yeah, thanks. Uh, another basic type is strings. To generate the strings. Uh, here I'm just generating a hundred strings from uh, with a length with minimum length of one and a maximum length of five. Uh, this is really uh, I think this is really nice because uh, you can create a strings from a given pattern. So this will be creating a string that starts with long, but then it will add a random number of characters. And there are some others like this one that I want to make sure that a given string is uh, uh, it has um, a certain amount of uh, characters maximum. And this is very interesting. You can generate a string with a given set of potential characters, and this is the one we have just seen. More simple types: you can create uh, longs, double bytes, characters, and a string. And you can combine generators. Okay, you can use uh, any. Okay, uh, any is uh, important just for um, for generating values from any value from a given set. Okay, so let's see an example. I'm just going to pass directly to the test. So, yeah. So this is the code I want to test, which is to validate that this string. It's not null and it's uh, within this list, it's containing this list. So, what it would look like if I was uh, using a data provider, which uh, is pretty, pretty obvious, right? So, yeah, we are doing something like this, and at some point we're getting a null, and at some point we're getting a some word, and then one. Well, first of all, sorry, some words I are bleeding. Because my point here was that data providers has its limitation, okay? Have its, uh, their limitation. So let's see a better approach for trying to uh, get this example. So if I would like to get any value from a given set, that is uh, much easier. Give me any value from this set. So this is a null, any possible string, or one, okay? So this is a way of combining uh, values or generators. We'll see uh, a couple of more uh, coming up. Okay, basic types are okay, but what about uh, more complex types? What, what if I want to create a data structure, an object, uh, a map? And also, even if I'm creating a map, 
what if I would like to create different different fields, um, different values for different fields? Well, let's see. Okay, I, I would like to generate instances of maps, and I would like to define a generator for each key. So again, we are validating a given map with some restrictions. So let's see how I would be creating a map generator. Well, uh, I am just using the map function and for the ID key, I'm just generating long values and for the description, string values. It's really simple, really, really easy to do. And uh, Then I will be using like this, take me 100 values of these kind of maps. What about more complex types? I have a, a class. I would like to create instances and I would like to set a generator for each field. Well, the same way we have a map, we have a person now, with, again, some uh, validation rules. So I would like to generate person instances and I would like different rules for each property. So it's as simple as this. I would like to generate instances of person with the type uh, function and for the age field, I would like to generate an integer for 0 to 120 and a strings for the name and then here because the address I don't care I'm not validating it I would like to generate any string and at least once I would like to get the null value remember the special uh, special cases uh, again I can just uh, call it really uh, straightforward if you are not familiar with Ruby uh, it, whenever you are using a getter, you can call it like if it were a property. And there are many other more uh, implementations for generating tuples, for combining, for generating lists, and generating dates. Okay, I have gone through at the speed of light. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so we have seen properties, generators, and then it's uh, time for feedback. So most of the time we are like relaxing, uh, but uh, eventually will, something will happen, okay? Okay, something has happened. What can we do? We need to ask some questions like, what was the error and what was the context? So the more feedback we have, the better. What uh, can Spock uh, that, uh, can do for us? Well, it has two main features that I would like to highlight. One is power assertions that it tells you what happened and what was the context, and the add and roll annotation, which will enrich the output of the failing text, giving you an extra feedback. Let's go with power assertions. Well, they are coming from, from Ruby, a very popular feature of the language. And the idea is that it's really nice to see what value produced the error, but it's even nicer to see the value and its context. Well, let's see an example. Here, we well, here we have two tests failing. Let's take a closer look to one of them. So we see that obviously this assertion has failed, but this is not the important part. The important part is that I know that I have passed the same two values to both functions, but it turns out that each one of them has different results. That is the context of the execution. I have many information for all the execution of both functions. What about the add and roll? I think we, I'm running out of time. Okay, a method annotated with and roll will have its iteration reporting independently. If you don't use uh, um, add and roll, all the iterations will be, um, will be considered as the same uh, test. If you want to uh, split any, every iteration and get information of each one, you uh, must be using add and roll. And it's also important because it helps you to customize the output of your failing test. And this is very important because you can add extra information to the, faili to the failure. That's what I have just said. Let's see an example. So here I have just uh, uh, written just the header of a feature uh, which has uh, like a title and then I have added the add and row and here I have just added like a string which is kind of a template 
And apart from the um, apart from the um, uh, apart from the power assertion that the failure may uh, tell me, uh, I can add that in the failure I would be adding the person age and the person name. You can just uh, take this as a, as a template, okay? So, apart from the power assertions, you will be uh, writing down some extra information on your own. So, if you think it's important to have this information, you can add it. Okay, so very quickly. Oh, I almost did it in time. So, before finishing my talk, at last, I, I want to uh, review again some ideas. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it doesn't matter when you create your test. The important thing is that you will be uh, testing the properties, what is important, the thing that you have to test. Of course, don't write anything if a generator can do it for you. That is a good motto. And last but not least, if eventually something goes wrong, please make your test talk. Okay? So that's it. If uh, you have any questions, I don't know if I have time for questions. Yeah? It's pretty clear. The last example without the overall annotation, you have the two outputs or only one. So the only difference was like the uh, The template is, uh, works with the add and roll. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work without it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, here you you would be no you you wouldn't be seeing anything. Oh, okay. You just would see an error. Yeah, because uh, take into account that uh, these are split because I have just said that each iteration is different. If this would have failed without the undraw, I would have uh, seen the the power assertions, but I would have seen only check person at some point. Okay. I would have seen this at some point. In fact, uh, and well, any other question? No? I can, well, in fact, I have a live this, so I can just show you, uh, yeah, talks. Reports, tests. So here, for example, there are two failures. No, these are missing text. So let me make failure something. Uh, properties, properties, genesis, feedback. So make this fail. So I'm going to make some test failing. Okay. So there you go. I'm using the add-on role. I'm, I'm using the, the template. But if I change this and I comment this. You can see, you can see that you are only getting the, the title of the test and then the powers are assertions. Okay, so um, if nobody has more questions, um, I will be just publishing my, my talk on GitHub and apart from that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you very much.